Hi guys, it is terribly hot out here, but we are going to put together this patio farmhouse summer tablescape for you. It is light and airy. It has the purples of the lavender and the blue bonnets that I so love. Grab yourself a cup of coffee or tea or a fruity drink and join me in putting together this tablescape. Before we get started on these yummy treats and farm fresh decor, let me take you to the beginning of this journey. I purchased these sturdy metal chairs at Goodwill last summer for only $5 each. I knew they would be beautiful with some TLC. Using some Rust-Oleum in flat black, I sprayed on two coats, allowing each coat to fully dry. I'm not the best spray can sprayer, and I should have used my attachment to help spray, but I didn't remember that, and so my fingers and my hand hurt for like two days. My advice? Use a spray attachment. I've had this table for many years, and you can see the wear it has. There are stains and rusted patches, but my worry is that I can't really paint these bars that are on the underside of the table. They will be visible because of the glass, but I'm more worried about the overall appearance and I'd prefer black over the existing color. So I've started taping the glass off with the tape and paper bags. I used a patio lawn furniture cleaner before I painted all of these pieces. I'll link the product down in the description box. With these pieces looking polished and fresh, my tablescape has the perfect setting and backdrop. I purchased the lovely black and white striped cushions at Walmart. Now I can focus on the crafts for my table. I'm using the larger of these two burner covers from Dollar Tree. I'm using Apple Barrel Gloss White from Walmart to cover the picture. I'll paint two coats and it doesn't fully cover the picture, but it's fine because this will be used face down. I just didn't want the picture to be very easily seen. I'm using this old canning jar as a stand for my plate and painting it with white chalk paint from Walmart. I painted two coats and let each coat fully dry. What I love about these canning jars is all the details around the jar that will come to life when I paint and distress it. Using medium grit sandpaper from Dollar Tree, I'm lightly sanding over all the raised details. You can also use a damp cloth to get the same distressed look by gently pulling or wiping off the chalk paint from the raised areas. Now I'm using E6000 glue to the jar lid. It was a little dried out but I'm also using hot glue, and the two held the plate to the jar well. If the food or items make the plate top heavy, I can unscrew the jar off and fill the jar with decorative rock from Dollar Tree to make it more stable. I want to add another rustic touch by using some jute twine. Using my hot glue gun, I place the twine just below the top ridge and follow all the way around, just dabbing glue every few inches.
When I reach all the way around, I begin a second layer of twine. As I reach the beginning of the second line, I trim the twine and place one last dab of hot glue. This sweet, rustic plate stand complements this farmhouse tablescape. I will need some charming and rustic napkin holders to dress my place settings. I will use this paper towel core and this burlap with lace trim ribbon from Dollar Tree. I measure the width of the ribbon to mark the paper towel core. Simply cut the piece and use that same piece to measure the next one. Now I can glue the ribbon onto the ring that I've cut. Did you know the first napkin rings appeared in France at about 1800? One of the things that I have to tell you is that being a Texas girl, I love my blue bonnets and I love lavender and anything purple or blue. So combine that with the white and you've got this beautiful French country feel. This next craft was a little complicated, but so worth putting together. I used two gold chargers from Dollar Tree that I already had and I painted them with my homemade off-white chalk paint. I painted two coats to fully cover the plates. I will be using a decoupage treatment on these plates, but this is a material that I've never worked with before. I purchased this beautiful Blue Bonnets plastic tablecloth on clearance at HEB. I will only be using this blue bonnet pattern. So I'll cut it out following the flower pattern and trimming the dark blue away. Now, Placing the strip of pattern along the outer edge of the plate, I can see the width that I will need to trim to place on the plate. I will work in sections to create a sunburst type pattern. When I cut the strip, I will cut it in a curved shape, following the shape of the flowers. I trim any hard edges to keep the shapes rounded or curved. Some of my hard work went off camera. Sorry about that. Now I can see what size to use next. I will overlap each section. Not all pieces will be the exact same size.
Now for the center, I will trim smaller pieces and place them overlapping the first layer in a circular pattern also. With my pattern laid out, I can decoupage them onto the plate using Mod Podge. Follow the pattern exactly as you placed it when cutting. This plastic material is so easy to work with compared to paper or napkins. It doesn't easily tear or crease and the color doesn't bleed. Also, because it won't shred when wet with Mod Podge, you can immediately brush on a top coat of the Mod Podge. You don't have to allow for drying time between coats. It's a very workable and forgiving material for decoupage, and I'm trying this again. This plate is a charger and won't be used to serve food or to plate food. My dinner plates will sit on the top of these chargers. You don't want to place any food items on a decoupaged item. The dinner plates Bowls and margarita glasses I use for my place settings are from Dollar Tree. And my salad plates with the French Country Blue Stripes are from Dollar General. You can mix and match all your dinnerware as long as you have a theme and color scheme in mind. Take an item you love for instance, a napkin, or a plate, or a certain flower, and build your tablescape around that item. I drew my inspiration from the flowers I chose. With the different hues of purple and blue, I looked around my home and chose items that would complement these colors. I decided to stay with a simple color palette and place setting because I wanted a soft and clean look. Now I'll create my place setting. This charger is sweet and perfect for my summer farmhouse theme. To complete my place setting, I've created holders for place cards. I used wooden cubes and a popsicle stick from Dollar Tree. First, I'll trim the rounded edge off of the popsicle stick. Then, I'll measure for the base. Glue two cubes together. And then glue the other two together. With two small dots of hot glue, place the two sets on the popsicle stick, allowing a small space in between. Then I paint top and all sides with my off-white paint. The end result looks like a place card nestled in sugar cubes. How yummy! Speaking of yummy, I've prepared a delicious cold pasta for my menu. First, instead of vegetable oil, I'll use extra virgin olive oil. We just planted an olive tree this spring and I'm really excited to one day enjoy those olives. 
This is the seasoning packet from the box. I know this is just a box pasta, but it's quick and easy and I like to add my own ingredients. Now I'll wait for the pasta to finish so I can rinse and drain. Fresh tomatoes, some sliced black olives, and a cup of shredded mozzarella jazz up this cold pasta salad. I'll refrigerate this till we're ready. I'm making a sparkling cherry pineapple lemonade and it's just as yummy as it sounds. This combination of bright flavors comes together in a sweet and tangy blend. Pineapple is one of my favorite flavors and I wanted to really bring it out by adding some freshly cubed pineapple. Fruity fresh drinks on a warm summer day are refreshing and delightful. And what would our table setting be without flowers? I picked my floral from Dollar Tree and I'm placing them in an antique watering can. I've chosen an array of whites and purple blues to complement my table. I love these cascading beauties that will add drama to my arrangement. Now is the time to take advantage of our beautiful outdoor weather and make yourself a beautiful picnic feast. Don't stay inside of the box, think outside of the box. And if you have a favorite flower or a favorite color or a favorite motif, then make use of that and create your own things. This has been a joy putting this together. It was a little warm, but that is our San Antonio, Texas heat. Putting this all together was super easy and super cheap. Thanks for stopping by. And if you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified of all my upcoming videos. I'll see you on the next video. And until then, cheers and have a great day.